Good morning and happy Sabbath Beacon Life family. Good morning. Anybody glad to be in the house of the Lord on this right. morning? Amen. We just want to sing praises to God for he's worthy of all our praise. Yes, he is. He's worthy of all the honor. Yes, he and is. he's worthy of all the glory. It's a song that you all know, so feel free to sing it with us. We sing the praises to our King. Put your hands together. We sing the praises to our King, for He is the King of Kings. We sing the praises to our King, for He is the King of Kings. We sing the praises to our King, for He is the King of Kings. We sing the praises to our King. yet another Sabbath. He has given us yet another day. We cannot deny the fact that we have been blessed and blessed indeed. Let me ask you a question. How many of you were, woke, were awakened this morning by an alarm clock? How many of you? Anybody? No, you weren't. No, you weren't. You were awakened by the Lord. He was the one that made sure that you still had blood running warm in your veins. He is the one who made sure that you still had breath going in and out of your body. He is the one that woke you up this morning. It wasn't no alarm clock. Tell you what, before this day is over, I want you to go get your alarm clock, go to the nearest graveyard, put that alarm clock in the graveyard and see how many people get up, okay? See how many people get up. Praise God for his 
mercy and his grace. Let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you. Thank you for the blessing of your Sabbath day. Thank you for life. Thank you for the fact that you are here with us. Lord, we ask that you would send a double portion of your Holy Spirit here to be with us and to guide us through this, your worship service. Lord, we dedicate it all to you. We dedicate our lives, ourselves, our, your holy temples, our lives, our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit if we have received Christ. And Lord, we rededicate them to you. And now we ask that this would be a worship service that would be worthy of you. We pray that we would worship you in the way of Abel and not in the way of Cain. Please, Lord, help us to worship you as you deserve to be worshipped. In Christ's most precious and beautiful name we pray. We say thank you and amen. Amen. <clears throat> this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us all rejoice and be glad in it. You're probably wondering why it is I'm standing up here in a t-shirt, in jeans. Uh, you know that the elders usually come to church if in nothing else, at least a shirt and tie, maybe a suit, things of that nature. Well, this is a special Sabbath. This is one of our service Sabbaths. And we're going to go out into the community and we're going to serve our community today. So therefore, we are we have dressed down and we are ready to go out and serve just as Christ did. Yes. I'd like to welcome you to Beacon Light, the place to connect, transform, and serve. In fact, I believe in it so much, had it written on my back. Amen. And while it's good to be here virtually, via YouTube or Facebook or whatever, it's nothing like actually being here amongst the Lord's people. There's something about being here and, and, and being able to, to see your smiling faces, being able to to touch you, to, to embrace you, to say good morning and happy Sabbath to you. There, there's nothing quite like it. I, I, I understand that there are a multitude of reasons why people are still at home. They may be sick, they may be shut in, whatever. But if you get the opportunity, you need to come to church. You need to be here with the Lord's people. We had a baptism last week, we were supposed to have a baptism, but we didn't have a baptism. What happened was that uh, Elder Bryant and I got into the pool and uh, we were supposed to baptize one person. We were supposed to baptize Sister Harlan. And so we baptized her, and then we went back to the back, and we started to get dressed again. I'm about halfway dried off and getting ready to put my clothes on and everything, and someone knocked on the door, and they said, put your stuff back on. What? Put your stuff back on. We've got, another, we've got two more candidates. Oh, okay, all right. So I put the wet, wet stuff back on. We came back out, we got in the pool. Praise God, that pool was nice and warm. Thank you, deacons. Thank you. <laughs> Can you imagine getting baptized in a river this time of year? Oh my goodness. But, put the wet stuff back on, got back in the pool. We baptized a, a little boy and a young lady. As a matter of fact, the young lady is the daughter of our piano player. And that was so special. That was such a blessing. And so we went back and we were getting dressed again. Another knock on the door. And I said, yes. And they said, put your wet stuff back on again. <laughs> We've got another candidate. Now, I'm gonna be 100 with y'all. At that particular time, I was not saying praise God. <laughs> I was saying, Lord, why couldn't you just let me stay in the warm pool? until everybody came up that wanted to get baptized and we could have gotten taken care of. But if you're not here in the building, you don't get to participate in stuff like that. You don't get to see stuff like that. And you did not get to see Elder Bryant baptize his uncle. 
What a blessing. He has gotten to bless his sister. He's gotten to, bless, he's gotten to baptize his sister. He's gotten to baptize his uncle. You don't get that. You don't get that on YouTube. You don't get that on Facebook. You get that by being here. Oh, my goodness. Praise God. And now for today's announcements. Our theme for this year is Kingdom Focus. We are seeking to become co-laborers with God in the building of his kingdom. On Wednesday night, we will have our Power Hour prayer meeting at 7 p.m. And the information is going to be on the screen here in just a minute. Guess not. Okay. Uh, <laughs> the Zoom information will be uh, will be given out to everyone. Um, we will let we'll make sure that everyone knows how to uh, to get in on that. You can pick up your 2023 tax receipts at the back of the church after ch church services, and if you prefer to have them given to you electronically you can fill out a tax re receipt request form on our website. Go to beaconlightkc.org and click on the resources tab and fill out the form. Now next Sabbath will be our throwback Sabbath. We will be having a special mu music production by a choir made up of Beacon Light participants. And if you would like to be a part of this choir, please contact Elder O.J. Percy he is the bass man back here. I've always said the coolest dude in the band is the bass man because you, you, got, you got the drummer and he's going crazy and everything. You got, the, you got the, the, the piano man and he's trying to be cool. But you got the bass man he's like, yeah, I'm cool. Yeah, you know it, I'm cool. So, contact Elder Percy if you would like to be a part of the choir. And as I said before, today is one of our serve Sabbaths. We will be going out into the community to do acts of service to the, to the people. I, sh I should get more than one amen on that. We should get a lot of amens on that. We need to go out into the community and show them that we are here and that we are here to serve them. We are here to serve them. We are not supposed to stay within these four walls. We're supposed to go out there and bless the community. I, I'm sorry, but you would be hard pressed to find one person who lives within a five mile radius of this church that is a member of this church. That's sad. That's one of the reasons why we go out and have our service Sabbaths so that we can show them that we're here, we're here for you, and we want you to become a part of this, this branch of the Lord. And on a sad note, funeral services will be held for Brother Robert Locke here at Beacon Light this coming Friday the 23rd. Visitation will be at 10 a.m. and he will be memorialized at 11 a.m. It is never easy to have to announce the passing of one of the Lord's saints. But, as it says in the word, precious in the sight of God is the passing of his saints. <sighs> Just think of the fact that Brother Locke won't have to worry about the problems, the troubles of this world anymore. We will not have him to love on and to love on us, but he will not have to worry about the problems of this world anymore. And so for that, I praise God. And speaking of the troubles of this world, this past Wednesday, February 14th, the day that is supposed to be the day of love, it's supposed to be Valentine's Day, the day on which we love on one another and, and things of this nature. There was a parade held for the Kansas City Chiefs, and you all know that I'm a big Chiefs fan. I'm a big Chiefs fan. I've, I've been around for, for every Super Bowl that the Chiefs have been involved in, even when they went to the first one and the fourth one and won the fourth one. And 
I'm a big Chiefs fan. But something happened at the Chiefs rally on Wednesday, February 14th, the day that's supposed to be set aside as love. We had some people who decided that they wanted to do some shooting. 22 people were injured, nine of which were children, and a poor young woman lost her life. I'm sure that when she went to that rally that day, she didn't think, well, there's the possibility that I might not get home. I'm sure that her family members never thought, there's a possibility that I might not get home today, or that she may not come home to us. But it emphasizes to us the fact that life is never guaranteed. I've seen the vast majority of you last Sabbath, and I'm praising God that I'm seeing you again this Sabbath. But will I get to see you next Sabbath? Will I get to see you the Sabbath after that? Will you get to see me? Life is never guaranteed. And because life is never guaranteed, we should be very happy to see one another. So what I'd like for everyone to do is I'd like for everyone to get up, move about the sanctuary, love on one another, hug one another. If you feel comfortable, give them a kiss. It says in the word the word to give one another a brotherly kiss. Hug one another, kiss one another, say that you love each other and really mean it. And say that you're happy to see one another because as I said before, this may be the last time you lay eyes on the person sitting next to you. This may be the last time that you lay eyes on the person that is here in the sanctuary with you. So move about, say hi to one another, bless one another with your presence. I just want to praise you forever and ever and ever.
speak to my heart holy spirit give me the words that will bring new life words on the wings of the morning the dark night will fade away speak to my heart speak to my heart holy spirit give me the words that will bring new life words on the talk to God, and um, that's a good thing. So much has happened. I mean, when you think about the, the stuff at the Chiefs Parade, people just going down to celebrate, and some people made it in the hospital, a person didn't make it home. You just never know when the devil is trying to take you out. So it is a good thing when we can talk to God as a family. And if you have any prayer requests or you want to come forward or, you know, whatever in your heart, a lot of times we don't <coughs> say things out loud or we don't pray because we think God doesn't hear. God already knows what we're going through. That's the good thing. He just wants us to acknowledge him as the one who will take care of it, right? All right, let us pray. Um, can we touch and agree? Will that work today? All right, all right. Let's touch and agree. Amen. Father God in heaven, we thank you for your love, for your grace, for your mercy, for your protection. Things that we take for granted, Lord, just going outside our house. We think we're going to do something within our own will, and we know that you have your hand on us, and we thank you for that. Father, as well as we thank you, we ask for your forgiveness, that you will cleanse us from anything that may be blocking the prayers to get to you this morning. We need you to hear us. We need your love. We need your guidance. We need you, Lord. No matter how big and bad we think we are sometimes, we have no control over anything. We put it all in your hands, God, because we know, regardless of what's going on around us, you see us. You know where we are. You know our hearts. And sometimes all it takes is for us to just talk to you. So many of us are struggling with some things, and we go, who do we talk to? Or we talk to the wrong person. We just need to talk to you, and you will guide us in the way we should go. Father God, this morning I'm going to lift up some people in prayer. The Locke Ivy family, Lord. Robert Locke. As his funeral will be on Friday, Lord, and as Elder Sinclair said, he's not suffering anymore. And though his family is sad, they should rejoice in the fact that he is not suffering anymore. And hopefully we will be around and be caught up with him when the Lord comes back. We also want to lift up the Thomas family, the one-month-old granddaughter that passed away. A granddaughter, one month of life. It was for a reason. We may not understand it now, but we know you still have your hand in this, in this issue, in this concern. So we ask that you will be with that family as well. Lord, there's some things amongst your children that they're going through. They might not have spoken it, but you know their hearts. And I'm going to ask that they would just acknowledge that you are in control, that they would just raise their hand to you to know that you are in control of whatever they're going through. We thank you and we love you. And as the speaker brings your word this day, may we receive it with open hearts and understand that what is being said is from you. Guide his, wor guide his words um, and guide our ears. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Give somebody a hug or <clears throat> an encouragement.
it is now the children's story. If you would like to come down into the children's story, come join me. Come join me. Before we get started, I got a secret. All right, but y'all can't tell nobody. All right? And everybody that can hear me, I got a secret, y'all. But don't tell nobody. All right? Y'all got to keep this on a hush-hush. Y'all got it? Now, don't judge me for what I'm about to say. All right? But I got a superpower. What y'all looking at me like that? Wait a minute. I said don't judge me. Okay, look. I have a superpower. Okay? Y'all believe me? What? You don't. I knew you weren't going to believe me. I do. You believe me? Okay, okay. You believe me kind of, sort of, skeptic. It's all right. What do you think my superpower is? Huh? You're not sure? Okay, I'm gonna tell y'all. I'm gonna let y'all know, but not yet, not yet. Okay? So there's two types of characters that have superpowers. What are those two characters? Do you guys know what those two characters are? It's a super hero, and what else? A super villain. I just said I had a superpower. I never said which character I was. Which one do you think I am? Now, let's say, be careful what you say. Sometimes I've been a superhero, but sometimes, there's been sometimes I've been a super villain. Hmm, right? So I'm gonna tell you a little bit of, of a story this young girl named Nancy. Now, Nancy had a huge imagination. I mean, a big one, a huge imagination. She used to imagine that she could be a race car driver, veterinarian, singer, boxer, dancer on the moon. Yeah, baby. Oh, yeah, honey. And she knew she could do all of it. She knew that each one of her gifts she could put together and save the world, yeah? So one day, she used her big imagination and she went up to someone and she said, hey, Michelle, guess what? Michelle said, what? One day, I'm gonna be a ballerina, veterinarian, boxer, race car, drive on the moon, who can sing? And guess what Michelle said? Girl, <laughs> no you can't. That's not even possible. That's impossible. You can't do that. Guess what happened to Nancy? It was almost like her, her face just started drooping down and it was like a light that just got dimmer and dimmer and dimmer. So Nancy was kind of sad and disappointed about that. So the next morning she woke up and it was time to get ready to go to school and she looked over at her brother and she was like, get up, wake up, hurry up, it's time to go, let's go to school. She woke up on the wrong side of bed, didn't she? What's wrong with her? So her brother looked at her and was like, okay, I'm trying. Now he, now he wasn't sounding very nice. So they get in the car, and they're driving to school, and now he's in his classroom with his teacher. 
He looks disappointed and upset and it's looking down and the teacher says to him, hey, hey, make sure you're staying focused. And guess what he says? Leave me alone. I am focused. I'm here, aren't I? Ooh, I know that's what that's the face I made. I said, who are you talking to? <laughs> and the teacher called his mother and was saying, hey, hey, brother wasn't very nice today. He wasn't saying very nice words to others or back to me. What was that about? So once Nancy and brother got home, mom decided to talk to them and say, hey, what's going on? I'm not getting very good news from your teachers. What's happening? So brother said, well, how I woke up this morning, Nancy was being mean to me and was being rude. And it was just hard for me to recover from that. And so mom says, Nancy, what's going on? Why were you being mean to brother? So Nancy said, well, to be honest, mom, when I told you I wanted to be a ballerina, race car driver, boxer that could sing and a veterinarian on the moon, your response and what you said back to me, it kind of hurt my feelings. It made me feel like I couldn't do anything I put my mind to. And you used to teach me that I could do all things through Christ, and I just, it really hurt my feelings. And it made me feel like my light that's inside of me was dimming. Mom had no idea she had that impact on Nancy. Mom had no idea the words that she said to Nancy was gonna hurt her that much and it even went into her brother and disturbed the whole class to where now your brother got detention because he wasn't being very nice. Mom had no idea. So mom said, you know what, Nancy? Let's look in the word, in the Bible and see what God says about that. Mom ended up turning to Proverbs 21, 23, and it says, whoever keeps his mouth and tongue keeps himself out of trouble. I think she was talking to brother that time. Although sometimes you could be upset, brother, we have to learn to keep our mouths because you have the power to keep your mouth and your tongue from saying unkind things. Even when someone has been unkind to you, then mom was told to turn to Proverbs 15.4. A gentle tongue is a tree of life. And mom turned to Nancy and said, I'm sorry, Nancy. The things that I said to you did not water your tree of life. It actually took it away. And I'm so sorry. And it didn't bear, your tree didn't bear beautiful, juicy fruits. Like in Proverbs 16, 24, gracious words are like a honeycomb, sweetness to the soul and health to the body. And my words didn't create very healthy fruit for you. And I'm so sorry. And I heard when you said that your light felt like it was dim. So what she told Nancy and brother to do, she said, put your hands together and connect all your fingers. Let me see you connect all of your fingers, right? She said, connect all your fingers together. When your hands are connected like that, it's almost like a circuit that goes through a light bulb and it shines bright. And so God had her read Genesis 1, 3. And God said, let there be light and there was light. Mom said, what if, what if that first day that God created light, that was really the light inside of you? Not the dirt, but the light was what he created. And God used his words to create the light in you, and I used my words to dim the light in you. So guess what my superpower is? And it says it in the Bible. Proverbs 18, 21 says, there is life and death in the power of the tongue. 
and those who love it will eat its fruit. My favorite part about my superpower is, is that you all have the same power that I do. Amen. That you can use your words to create life into someone and change someone's whole world around them. You can use your words to heal somebody's body because it's sweet and it's healthy. Or you can be a super villain. And if it's not life, it's death. Right? So as we go into today and we go into our service day, we want to make sure when we see someone, we're watering their tree of life. And we're helping their light that was created on that first day shine brighter than ever before because we're made in the image of God just by using our words. So when we see someone today, we're going to approach them with our, super, our superpower and say, let there be light in this person. All right? So let me see you stand up, and I want you to put your hands on your hip. And your shoulders are back. Come on, stand up like you got some power in you. And say, I am a light. So we're going to pray before we go. Who would like to pray? Would you all like to pray? Is there anyone that would like to pray? And it's okay that we choose when we use our words. Sometimes it's hard to use our words in front of a lot of people. So we can always choose. Okay. Can we hold each other's hands? We're going to pass our energy around each other, just like we're a circuit. Right? We're going to shine that light bulb. Come on. You want to hold hands? All right. So now we're connecting, we're connecting our light bulbs to one another. So imagine how big this light is in the middle of us. Look how big that is. Because when two or three are gathered, baby, our power gets stronger. Did y'all know that? And we can ask for anything right here. And God will grant it, right? So would you like to tell Dear Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for being able to be in your midst. We thank you for showing us what our superpower really is. As we walk away, we ask that you help us to remember that big bright light that you created first that you put within us and that we may be able to shine on someone else's tree, that we'll be able to water someone else's plants so they may be able to feed off of the big, juicy, vibrant fruits that you help them bear. We love you for who you are. Help us to be able to have great strong days as we go into every world, every school, every home, and every environment. Thank you for hearing and always answering. And in your name we do pray, amen, amen, and amen. All right, thank you guys for being lights with me. Have a good one. All right, y'all, amen, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Those of you that know me know I love my comic books. And um, whenever you saw somebody with their hands on their hips like this, it means, I am here to save the day. But when you saw my mother with her hands on her hips like this, it meant, boy, you about to get a whooping. I would like to introduce to some and reacquaint with others, Chaplain Samuel Juden. Um, I was trying to figure out how to say his last name. I didn't know if it was the Spanish pronunciation, Yudin, or if it was the uh, French 
Jourdan, or something like that. Parlez-vous français. <laughs> but uh, Chaplain Samuel Judan serves as an active duty member of the United States Air Force Chaplain Corps and is stationed at the 509th Bomb Wing, Whiteman Air Force Base, Missouri, where he serves as unit chaplain for the 509th Operations Group. He is endorsed by the North American Division Adventist Chaplaincy Ministries. He provides pastoral care for counseling for, and counseling for airmen. He engages his units in areas of spiritual resilience and readiness, ethics, moral, morale, and religious accommodation. He conducts religious rites and implements proactive resilience, resiliency programs like marriage enrichment, seminars, as well as single airman resilience seminars. Prior to his ministry in the U.S. Air Force, Chaplain Jodan uh, pastored in the South Central Conference of Seventh-day Adventists from February 2011 to March of two, 2020. Where, uh, I'm sorry, yes, 2011 to 2020, where he uh, was blessed to pastor in a, two districts and four lovely churches in Mississippi and Alabama, including the Soso SDA Church in Soso, Mississippi, and First Tuskegee in Tuskegee, Alabama. He received formal ordination to the ministry in 2015. As a pastor, Chaplain Jodan uh, conducted revivals, baptized, blessed, and uh, buried precious souls. He sponsored a literacy evangelist campaign, facilitated community food drives with the local food bank, and was involved with the Poor People's Campaign. Cap Chaplain Judan received a Master of Divinity from the SDA Theological Seminary at Andrews University, University in 2010. Prior to that, he received a Bachelor of Arts in, Theolo in Theology from the former Atlantic Union College in 2007. Chaplain Judan was born in Brooklyn, New York, and raised in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Well, nobody's perfect. Uh, <laughs> his hobbies include photography, haircutting, reading, bass playing, cool dude, and occasional bread baking and bean pie making. Joined by his wife, Angel, and stepdaughter, Maya. Is it, is it Maya? Or oh, Maya? Okay. And his go-to passage of scripture is found in Isaiah 26, 3 and 4, which states, Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. Trust ye in the Lord forever, for in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. After the choir brings us another selection, the next voice that you will hear will be that of Chaplain Jordan. How many of you know that we serve a great God? Yes, we do. Amen.
praising Lord. I will praise you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'll praise you, Lord. Forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Hallelujah, God, we give you praise. Yes, we, do. we give you honor. Thank you, Lord. We give you worship. Forever, God, will lift your name high. Hallelujah. He's been a good God. Yes, he has. He's been a merciful God. Yes, he has. He's been a faithful God. Yes, he has. He's been a God that will deliver you. Yes, he has. A God that will set you free. Yes, Lord. And we thank him for being good. Thank you, Lord. Oh. 
Has God been good to you? Has God been good to you? Woo. My Lord. <laughs> the only way I can say it is that uh, peculiar anointing. Thank you, Brother Minister. Thank you, Van, for ushering us into the presence of, of God. been so good. Heavenly Father, I just ask right now that you would rest upon me. Rest upon this, your congregation, your people. Be in this place, we ask. We give you permission to move as you will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Being no stranger to Beacon Light, I think this is my third time speaking um, for Pastor Fontes. Um, I asked Elder St. Clair to read a shortened version of my uh, <laughs> bio, but I thank you, Elder, for, for, uh, for your hospitality and for just uh, making me seem taller than I am in real life. Amen. Amen. Um, it's always a pleasure being here with you and sharing with you. Uh, today, I've been given a, a particular assignment, a specific assignment. I know that you are going through your focus areas, family enrichment, outreach, evangelism, children, and youth, and this Sabbath dealing with uh, unity, or your pastor told me unity, community. And so without further ado, going to turn to the word and uh, spring from there. Uh, John chapter 17. And verse 11, I'll read it in your hearing, the uh, New American Standard Bible. John 17, verse 11. And the Word of God says there, I am no longer in the world, yet they themselves are in the world, and I come to you, Holy Father. Keep them in your name, the name which you have given me, that they may be one as we are. The question I'd like to deal with this morning is, what does kingdom community or kingdom unity look like? Yeah. What does kingdom community look like? Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we've turned to your word. Now we ask that you would turn to us. Cause us to have unity in our community, we pray. Amen. 
what does kingdom community or kingdom unity look like? In their song entitled uh, Tribes at War on their 2010 album entitled uh, Distant Relatives, Nas and Damien Jr. Gong Marley, the son of the late Bob Marley, vividly and accurately uh, paint the picture of a planet in upheaval. Global conflict, strife, turmoil, rest, unrest, uh, conflict exists at every level of society. On a global scale, nations threaten other nations and flex their diplomatic, their uh, information and military and economic might to get others to do their bidding. Lately, nations have been breathing out uh, veiled nuclear threats against others in a way to position, to position themselves for global dominance. On a national scale, dueling political parties and their grassroots uh, uh, adherents clash in the streets. States threaten to secede if they don't like what the nation is doing. Racial and ethnic strife and passions run high and hatred is passed down from generation to generation to generation. Locally, municipal officers struggle to make and keep their city safe. Neighbors, neighborhoods, excuse me, are filled with warring factions as gangs, cliques, and posses vie for supremacy on the streets and corners and blocks and sections that they don't even own. Violence explodes often in broad daylight over petty territorial disputes. Still further, even inside of homes, families are at war with one another. Husbands estranged from wives, wives estranged from husbands, brother against brother, sister against sister. All of this is due to disharmony and disunity or division. Canaan, a guest artist featured on that song I mentioned earlier called Tribes at War, broke down the disharmony, the disunity, the division in five steps. And listen to his words. He said, timeless in case we never been acquainted. Flyness, who made it? It gets duplicated. Mindless violence will let me try to paint it. Here's five steps in hopes to explain it. One, it's me and my nation against the world. Two, then me and my clan against the nation. Three, then me and my fam go against the clan. Four, then me and my brother with no hesitation go against the fam until they cave in. Five, who's left in this deadly equation? That's right, it's me against my brother. Then we point the Klushnikov and kill one another. While it's easy uh, to allow our hearts to fail us, or for fear to take hold of us because of the state of affairs in this world, the truth of the matter is that this world is simply going about the natural order of things. Jesus said in his word, Jesus said that my kingdom is not of this world. That means if his kingdom is not of this world, consequently, the kingdom of this world is being occupied by another. Are you following me this morning? In other words, even though God is in control, somebody say amen. amen. Even though God is in ultimate control, there is another force that, is, uh, that has custodial or operational oversight in our world. Meaning... The things that we see transpiring on CNN and Fox and MSNBC and Channel 4, 5, 9, and 41 on the evening news are just a manifestation of the kingdom of this world. Division, crime, violence are a manifestation of all the things that are wrong with our world. Well, then the question is, if God's kingdom is not of this world, whose kingdom does this world belong to? In John 12, Jesus answers this question and tells us that Satan is the prince of this world. 
In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, Paul goes a step further and calls him the God, lowercase g, of this world. And so, yeah, somebody said lowercase, lowercase, right, 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 right. Uh, see, see, the wars and the rumors of wars, the famines, the pestilence, the violence, the crime, the racism, the hatred, the bigotry, the xenophobia are all, uh, uh, and are all the outward working of the kingdom of which Satan himself serves as chief custodian. The fact of the matter is that our world is disjointed. Our world is out of whack. The world that we live in is at war with itself on every level. The world is in trouble uh, uh, in every jurisdiction. The world is messed up. The world is toe up, as they say, broken down, run down because of the lack of unity and a sense of community. Jesus said, if a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. If, if a house, if a house, if a house is de- divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And he said, if Satan is risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand and it's finished. So Jesus here, Jesus here is telling us the fate of Satan's kingdom. The fate of Satan's world. He's telling us that Satan's world is going to end. Now, 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 uh, for for those of you who are Bible nerds like me, uh, uh, you might be saying, Pastor Chaplin, you're taking the the passage out out of of his context. Fundamentally, though, uh, Satan's kingdom is divided against itself and it will fall. Jesus, uh, the, the, the immediate context is that Jesus was responding to leaders who were accusing him of casting out the devil with the power of the devil. And in response, Jesus makes a logical argument to make the point that he does not cast out the devil by the power of the devil, but that, he, but that, but that, but that if the devil is divided against himself, it cannot stand. But beloved, When you see the kinds of things happening in our world and in our communities that I spoke of earlier, it is easy to conclude that Satan's kingdom is indeed divided against itself. How else do you explain all the mindless violence going on? How else do you experience, how else do you, do you describe the experience of, uh, of wicked factions going up against wicked factions and coming out with wicked results? If Satan's kingdom is marked by division, turmoil, crime, violence, one wicked faction going up against another wicked faction, then we can safely conclude uh, that Satan's kingdom and its subjects thereof are indeed definitely divided against one another. Satan's kingdom is marked by four elements, identity in, with, and of the world. Disunity, self-service, and bondage. All right, enough about that. So if, 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 if Satan's kingdom is marked by identity with the world, identity in the world, identity of the world, disunity, disharmony, uh, self-service, and bondage, then what does God's community, what does God's kingdom look like? I'm glad you asked this morning. Pastor Fontes gave me 20 to 25 minutes, so I'm going to try to wrap it up as quick as I can. Amen. So what does kingdom community look like, chaplain? What does kingdom unity look like? In short, kingdom community, kingdom unity is marked by the words of Jesus in John 17 and verse 11. It says, I am no longer in the world. Amen. And yet they themselves, that's y'all, us, are in the world, and I come to you, Holy Father, keep them in your name, that name which you have given me, that I may, that they may be one, somebody say one, One. that they may be what? That they may be one, even as we are. I want to give you four things that the kingdom, uh, that kingdom community looks like, and then I'm going to take my seat, Amen. The first thing is this, kingdom kingdom community looks like kingdom identity. Somebody say kingdom identity. Kingdom identity. identity. First, 
kingdom community is marked by identity. Kingdom community realizes that its first and most important identity is that is not only that as a child of God. Somebody say, I'm a child, I'm a child of God. But that your identity is, your identity individually and corporately is in God. Did you get the difference? There's being a child of God, you're identified as a child of God, but then you are identified uh, 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 in God. Let me break it down. See, we are called, the Bible says that we are called not by our name, but by the name of God. We are called, God says, not by our race, not by our identity or or, or ethnicity, not by our family, but we are called by the name of God. In other words, yes, I'm black and I'm proud. Somebody say amen. Amen. But my identity is not in my blackness. My identity is in Christ. Jeremiah the prophet said, uh, he said this, Jeremiah says that Judah and Jerusalem will be called the Lord our righteousness. I'm going to say that again. He says that Judah and Jerusalem, that's y'all, that's us, God's people, that our name will be the Lord our righteousness. I can't even wrap my mind around that. Paul says this. Paul says that there was neither Jew nor Greek. There was neither a slave nor free man. There was neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Amen. That means that while I love my identity, while I love myself and how God made me, that, 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 that this is not the final, this is not the final uh, version of me that God says uh, that I will be called the Lord our righteousness. In another place, Paul says this way. I'm going to give you this for free because this, this, this ain't in my notes, okay? Paul, in another place, he says this. I'm getting excited, so let me, let me calm down just a little bit, okay? All right? In another place, he says this. He says, Paul says that, uh, 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 that, that he made him to be sin for us so that we can be his righteousness. That don't even make sense. How many times have you messed up? How many times have I messed up? Too many times to count. Yet, Paul says that God is going to give you a new identity. You'll no longer be called sinner. You're no longer going to be called mess up. You're no longer going to be called a uh, mess up, but that you're going to be called righteousness. Not only righteousness, but it says that we will be his righteousness. And so kingdom community, kingdom unity, kingdom community looks like kingdom identity. Somebody say kingdom identity. The second thing is this, kingdom community is marked by kingdom unity. Kingdom unity. This means that we move with one purpose. This means that God's church moves with one mission. This means uh, that we move uh, to the beat of one drum, and that is the drum of Jesus Christ. Now, being in unity does not mean uniformity, all right? That means if I like my jazz and my hip-hop and my contemporary gospel, amen, it's okay for you to like your classical, your country, and your uh, uh, traditional hymns, amen? You ain't got to like the same things that I like for us to, for us to be in unity, right? If you like uh, Reebok and I like New Balances, that's all right, right? You know, uh, you, you ain't got to like the same things. You don't have to believe the same things I believe down to the T for us to be in unison. Amen? But, but we are united. We are one because of Jesus. You could be silent generation or Gen Z. We are united in Jesus. Amen? The third thing that kingdom community looks like, looks like is that kingdom community is marked by kingdom service. Say it again. Kingdom service. Kingdom service. Jesus said this 
in, 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 uh, in uh, Mark uh, 10, verse 42 through 45, he said this. He says, calling them to himself, Jesus said, you know that those who are recognized as rulers of the Gentiles lorded over them, and their great men exercise authority over them. But it is not that way among you. But whosoever wishes to become great among you shall be your servant. Amen. Amen. And whosoever wishes to be first among you shall be slave of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to serve, to be served, excuse me, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. Jesus said, listen, I came from heaven on high. I, I, I know things and have seen things that y'all have never even, you can't even think of in, in your imagination. And Jesus said, I came not to be served, but to, be, but to serve and to give my life for all. So you cannot be a follower of Christ without taking on the mantle of service. Amen. If you are a member of Beacon Light, if you are a member of the church of God, service must be the mindset that you, uh, service, excuse me, service must be the mindset from which you operate. Yes. Amen? Amen? See, step number four, or, 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 or the fourth thing, kingdom community is marked by kingdom deliverance. Kingdom deliverance. When Jesus called his disciples, he didn't give them fancy titles or fancy positions. The Bible says that he gave them power. There's a difference between position and power. It's a difference between titles and power. See, uh, too many churches, I'm not talking about being light now, amen. But too many churches, you know, we like positions and we like titles. But we ain't got no power. It's time for God's people. It's time for God's church to operate in power. Listen to what, what, listen to what the Bible says in, uh, in, in Luke, 10, uh, Luke 10, 12 through 17. It says this. It says, it says, or 17 through 20. It says this. Now the 72 returned with joy. This is after Jesus sent them out, right, into the world. The 72 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. Behold, and Jesus responds, he said, behold, I have given you authority to walk on snakes and scorpions and authority over the power of the enemy, and nothing will injure you. Amen. Amen. Nevertheless, Jesus says, do not rejoice that the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. Amen. Amen. So Jesus gave them power to deliver the world around them. That means when you are a follower of Christ, eventually you're, God's going to have to use you to help deliver somebody from the kingdom of this world. Amen. God's ultimate mission is to use you to use me to deliver somebody from the power of this uh, the kingdom of this world that is the power of satan again he says in 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 in, in john 14 12 he says truly i say to you that the one who believes in me just as jesus speak he says the one who believes in me the works that i do he will do also and greater works sh than these shall he do because I am going to the Father. So what, does, ex what exactly does kingdom community look like? Kingdom community looks like the prayer of St. Francis of Assisi who said, Lord, make me an instrument of thy peace. So where there is hatred, kingdom community sows love. Where there is injury, kingdom community pardons. Where there is doubt, kingdom community continues in faith. Where there is despair, kingdom community hopes. Where there is darkness, kingdom community not only lights a light, but becomes the light, beacon light. Where there is despair, kingdom community hopes. 
Where there is darkness, kingdom community is the light. Where there is sadness, kingdom community looks like joy. Uh, where there is uh, a kingdom community does not seek to be consoled, but ki kingdom community consoles. Kingdom community does not seek to be understood, but to understand. Kingdom community does not seek to be loved, but to love others. Kingdom community knows that it is in giving that we receive and that it is in pardon that we are pardoned and that in dying to self that we are born again to eternal life. Kingdom community edifies. Kingdom community encourages. Kingdom community heals. Kingdom community restores. Kingdom community intercedes. Kingdom community speaks life. Kingdom community uplifts. Kingdom community serves. Kingdom community delivers. And kingdom community stands in unity. That's what kingdom community looks like. I don't know about you, but I heard about uh, when the saints go marching in. Oh, when the saints go marching in. Oh, how I want to be in that number. When the saints go marching in. Is that your hope this morning, saints? Is that your hope? Is that your desire that you be part of this kingdom community that God is, is, is gathering together? I'm done. I'm done. Father, I've done the best that I can do to deliver the message to your people. God, I ask that, dear Lord, that all that are in the, under the sound of my voice would make it their decision today to be part of the kingdom community. We, we're thankful that, that we are all included in the kingdom, that no one is left out. It does not matter what we've done or how we've messed up or where we've been or, 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 or anything like that. But what matters is that we are one in your blood. We are one by thy blood. So God, I ask that you would seal our decision today. Keep us for we cannot keep ourselves. Keep us in that kingdom community. Wrap us up in unity. Help us, Lord, to open our arms and include anyone who would walk into these doors to be part of your community, dear God. Help us not to lift the head or puff the chest as though we are better than anybody else. But help us to have a heart like our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. All this we ask and more. In your name, amen. Happy Sabbath, church. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Um, <laughs> they were calling me up, and I'm just, I was actually just stuck in a moment, honestly, uh, thinking about my life, thinking about um, what God is doing to get us fit for the kingdom. Um, I'm thinking about the people that I've met. I'm thinking about the people that can be impacted by our light. And when I think about that, I think about we need to be transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit. And I appreciate, I appreciate you, Pastor, because uh, that message really hit home. <laughs> and honestly, you know, they have a term that says dumbfounded, but that's not the case here. Because we, we have heard a word, and um, <laughs> I'm knowledge founded, and honestly. At this time, we are going to take up the tithes and offerings. Will the deacons please come forward? You know, we have a, a moment in time where 
we get to participate in something that's greater than ourselves, and that's called kingdom building. God has given us the ability to give. God has given us the ability to help the community, to help abroad, to help in places that we know not of. When we give, we give to the Lord's kingdom. We give to the people that we never knew, that we never met, so that one day we can see those people in God's kingdom and we can all meet on that sea of glass. And that's my hope. Is that your hope? Pray with me as we collect tithes and offerings. Father God in heaven, Lord, we are so thankful for this opportunity. Lord, you've given us ears to hear. You've given us, Lord, life in our bodies. Lord, I can't believe that I am a living vessel for you to go out into the world to be a light in a dark place. Father God, I pray, Lord, that these funds that will be raised, Lord, will hit all four corners of this earth so that we can get the work done for an already finished work. Lord, you're good. You've been better than good. And I just want to thank you and praise your holy name because I'm here. You're here. And those who are watching on YouTube and Facebook, I just thank you. And I just want to praise God for you. And I ask that at this moment, no matter how you give, cash app, if you're walking it in, however you're giving, God is going to bless you regardless. God is going to bless you according to his mighty riches. I pray, Father God, that you would touch every heart here, that they will give abundantly not knowing that the blessings that we receive will be spiritual as well as monetarily, Lord. Help us, Father God, to be givers, not just receivers. Lord, we love you and we praise you. In Jesus' holy name, amen. I just want to share a little something about giving. Uh, a lot of you know that um, I resigned from my job about seven years ago to quote unquote do full time ministry. I didn't know what that was going to look like. <laughs> um, I was scared and I never trusted in the Lord 100%. And so it was something that was new to me. And I remember the day the Holy Spirit told me that it was time. My wife and I were sitting. Uh, for dinner at Cafe Gratitude and I just began to cry and she said honey why are you crying and I said the Holy Spirit wants me to quit the job soon and she just looked into my eyes she grabbed my hands and she said honey whatever you do make sure you make the right decision because I'm attached to you we have a big decision to make people to go all out for God when this life is temporary, we got to understand that we are living for something that's for eternity. It's permanent. But a lot of times we base our decisions on temporary things, temporary situations. But I say that all to say this. The more you give, the more God gives to you. I've seen it in my life, personally. Not just giving to the church, but just giving to people in general. I've seen God pour into my life in so many different ways, I can't even explain it. So if we choose to be that light of the world, we are going to give. We are going to build God's kingdom, person by person, each one reach one. Uh, it's good to see the Williams family in the house. God bless you guys. Will the deacons please come forward? going to bless these uh, bless these funds that we received
Bow your heads with me. Father God in heaven, Lord, we have received the funds that have been committed to your kingdom building. Lord, we just want to thank you so much for what you're doing behind the scenes that we can't see. Lord, you're doing things for us, Lord, to get us fit for the kingdom. Lord, you're taking things out of our lives, Lord, to build us up for your kingdom. You're taking people out of our lives that are not good for us, Father God, to build us up for your kingdom. And Father God, I pray, Lord, that all these things that you've given into our hands, Lord, that we will allocate it efficiently and effectively, and that we will continue to praise you and give you glory, to shed light and to give light into this dark world, Father. Once again, we just want to thank you for the funds that we received today. In Jesus' most precious name, amen. Hello? Okay. This has been a fantastic day. This has been a fantastic day. Any day that you get up out of your bed is a fantastic day. Any day that you come to church and hear preaching like that is a fantastic day. Any day that you have the ability, the wherewithal, the opportunity to go out into the community and serve the people of God, that is a fantastic day. And I praise the Lord for this day, for the blessings that he has given us, for the blessings that we are about to pass on to others because of the fact that he has blessed us. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for this, your Sabbath day. Thank you for this, your worship service. Thank you for your manservant who came to us and gave us your word. Lord, it is all about you. It is all about you from Genesis through Revelation. It is all about you. We thank you for the fact that you loved us so much that you got off your throne in glory, came to this earth, became a baby. You had to rely on someone to change your diapers. You went from sitting on a throne in heaven to someone having to change your diapers. And beyond that, you went on to live a totally sinless life and then go through the humiliation, the degradation of being crucified, the disrespect, the dishonor, the things that you went through so that you could shed your blood for each and every one of us. Lord, I don't know about anybody else here, but I praise your name that you shed your blood for me, that you gave up your life for me. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. This concludes our services for this morning. And as we've said before, we're going to go out into the community and we're going to serve those in the community. But before we leave each other, I'd like to say, now to him who is able to do far more abundantly beyond all that we ask or think according to the power that works within us. To him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Beacon Light, you are now dismissed. Praise the name of the Lord.